The items that you're going to see in today's video are things that I find useful in my own shop, and hopefully you will find them useful as well. Let's get into the first item. Item number one is uh, something that's called thread detectors. Um, and as you can see here, I have a imperial set and a metric set. And the reason I think these are so beneficial is because I think every woodworker probably has a drawer or multiple drawers or bins that look something like this. This is where, you know, spare bolts that I have on projects that I didn't use just kind of get tossed into. Well, it's handy to have that because there's times where I need those. The problem is, is that I'm always searching to figure out what size something is. So that's where these come into play. And they're extremely, extremely helpful. You can get them at like any home store, you can get them off Amazon. They, they cost hardly anything. And when you need them, they're fantastic. And so, you know, if I'm trying to figure out the size of this bolt, I already know it, but it's a 3 8 16. So now if I go to the local home store, I know that I'm looking, if, let's say I need 10 of these and I only have one, I need to go look for, you know, nine more 3 8 16. It's kind of like the thing that they have on display at a home store, but now I can do it from the house get everything I need to know and then go to the store and buy it and not waste any more time. Same thing applies, you know, if you need to find out what size the nut that you have is, you can do that on the opposite side. So that's really, really helpful. And again, you can buy these in both metric and imperial. So if I know I need one of these bolts, M8 1.25, I know that that's the size that I need and that's what I'm looking for when I go to the home store. And I just keep these hung up on the wall. I'm telling you, when you need these things, you're so glad that you had them. And it's a great thing to have laying around for so many reasons. All right, the next thing is a 3D printed item, which I mean, these days, you know, having 3D printed things in the shop are so common, but people are coming up with all these amazing solutions for things. I don't have a 3D printer. I wish I did. Um, but what this is, if you're somebody that has the TSO parallel guides, they can be kind of a pain to store. And I used to just take nails and like put it underneath it and then I'd be looking at it and it's all cockeyed and everything. Well, then my good friend, Eric Barber, actually designed these because he made them for himself and he sent some to me, uh, kind of like as a prototype for me to try out because he knew that I had these parallel guides. And these things are fantastic. Not only do they have this little holder right here that just turns on that screw, but these things fit inside of there perfectly. And there's actually a lip right here that it stays behind. So you could just slide these in here just like this and they'd probably be just fine. I have two sets. Um, I'm really glad that I have them because it, it just keeps these things nice and neat. They're easy to access. Um, I think he sells them on his, on his Etsy page. Then right here, he also prints this little holder that comes with uh, the hex driver and then also the you know thin rip guides so you can keep everything in a nice small space right there. So this is a very specific product, um, you know, solution, I guess, just to this one thing. But if you have these, that, that right there is just fantastic. So if you've been following my channel or my content for any, you know, given amount of time, you'll know that I enjoy wearing uh, one of these leather aprons. This one's from Leather by Dragonfly. Um, I've had a couple of different ones. My son even has one, but he hasn't worn it yet because <laughs> He's not out in the shop building with me just yet. Um, the, the benefits to having an apron is obviously you can have the stuff on you at all times. Well, not everybody wants to wear an apron. And it's actually funny because I love wearing the apron. It has a lot of advantages. Um, I tend to actually wear the apron during the hotter times of the month because I'm normally wearing shorts. And, you know, it's, it keeps stuff off of my clothes, you know, my t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. Well, in the wintertime, I have a tendency, obviously, to wear pants and hoodies and jackets and stuff like that. So I don't like changing the clothes. So I actually wear this when it's warmer. And what I want to talk to you guys about is this item right here. This is known as the Sedgley. And yes, it is named after uh, Mr. Brian Sedgley of Sedge Tool, uh, otherwise known as Festival Sedge. And what this is, is this is just a pouch that you hang on your belt. So I'm going to bring you in closer to show you kind of what the benefits are, in my opinion, to having one of these. Now, instead of wearing the apron when I'm out in the shop, I'll just throw this on my side and keep all of my tools on me that I'm using on a regular basis. 
And it's just really nice because I can just continuously pull the things out of this. Um, now, granted, it is not the apron and it doesn't have the same uh, properties and, you know, safety uh, benefits and the ability to carry more things as the apron does. But when you don't want to wear an apron, but you want to keep those things on you, it's a really good solution. So let me bring you in closer and show you all the things that I keep in mind. So the first thing that I'll highlight is that it comes with one of these metal clips, right? And it's a very strong clip right here. So that's what actually clips onto the belt. In the front, it has multiple pouches around the outside. Now, this is not something that you can customize. This is just, you're going to buy it exactly like this and put the things that you want in it. But for me, I like to keep the various marking uh, items that I use, right? I have different sizes and different colors for different things. I keep my Pelini in there. I keep a uh, hex over here on the magnet because there's a magnet here. This is the hex I use the majority uh, for the majority of my tools, so I like to have it on me. There's another magnet here. They're very strong magnets. And then in here, I've got my Inker Tiny T. I keep a, a knife on me in there. I keep my uh, dust collection remote in there when I'm not actually working. Uh, normally, I'll just clip this onto my pants, but now I know it's always here. I have a small little square, and I've got my carbide scraper that I use for edge banding and other very small, tiny things. But those are all of the items that I keep inside of mine. And so, I can get by with these things for the majority of the things that I build and everything else that I need is usually within arm's reach. So um, really, really nice to have. This would be a great uh, gift for somebody who maybe doesn't want to commit to an apron, but likes the idea of having their things on them and not just stuffed in their pockets. For some reason, I always get asked, you know, what tape measure do I like and do I use? You know, I I've talked about these before. I like the fast cap tape measures. I mean, that's pretty much the only ones I have at this point. I've used some other ones. These ones are just always accurate. They always match up with one another, which is always a big concern with tape measures. I'm not concerned about, you know, you know, this one and this one being the same when I pull them out, right? Because I know they are, I've checked them. And unless I ever see a problem, it's never gonna be a concern for me. But the two that I use exclusively are the yellow and the blue, right? And so FastCap has all their tape measures uh, colored and each color does something different. So this yellow one, is both metric and imperial. It's metric on one side, imperial on the other. And this one right here is called the True 32, and that is only metric. It is metric exactly the same on both sides of the tape. For those of you that uh, don't know that I like to primarily use metric, that's why I have these, because when I'm doing cabinetry, this is the only tape measure that I will use. These tape measures, like any others, you know, they have some great features. I can write on this if I need to write a quick measurement and it, and it comes right off. They have a nice rubberized housing. I've dropped these multiple times and they still work just fine. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a minute. They do come with belt clips, which is nice. Some of them I have the belt clip on, some I don't. If I ever put one of these in my Sedgley pouch that I just showed you, um, I usually take the belt clip off, otherwise I'll clip it next to the Sedgley. They do come with pencil sharpeners, which a long time ago used to be beneficial for me. Now it's not because I, I like to use other uh, things to mark up my material, which don't require sharpeners. And they obviously have the locks, which work very well, especially over long term. Now I say long term because the thing I wanted to mention is, so this is the very first one I bought a little over four years ago, I'd say. And this tape measure still works. I know somebody's gonna freak out that I just let that thing snap back into the, <laughs> into the tape, but I don't care, it's my tape measure. I just wanna highlight how I've had this for a very long time. I've, I've dropped it more times than I can even count and everything still works on it just fine. These things are not expensive. They will last a very long time. These are the ones that I like, uh, and I just order them either directly on FastCap or I go buy them at Woodcraft or I buy them off Amazon. They're everywhere. They're very easy to find. They're very good uh, tape measures. So if, if you're looking for a tape measure that you just want to be consistent throughout your shop, FastCap would be the ones that I would go with. The next item I wanna talk about is actually in the background right now of this video. And I did this on purpose because this next item is something that I get asked about all the time and I'm never doing a video about that thing. And the other thing that really surprised me about that, if you just did a quick Google search, um, you would definitely find those. It is another item that is sold by FastCap and that is the guide rail holder. Now, where you will commonly see these used is on a garage door and it's kind of a genius design and there's plenty of other uh, people that 3D print things like these now because they've become so popular. But these are used to mount to a garage door 
so you can utilize the space of a garage door. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do that. As you see behind me, it's not just limited to a garage door. You can also mount it directly to a wall. That's the wall that I built in front of my garage door. Had I not built that wall, absolutely, I would have used those on the garage door itself. So it's kind of nice. You can either put it on the garage door or you can just put it on a regular wall. But the way that these operate is they have a groove at the top and they have this little piece here that turns like that. And you put your guide rail in it, just like you see it right there. And it works perfectly. It just keeps it nice and in place. And the benefit to that is that if you put it on your garage door, as you raise the garage door up and it sits like this, it can't fall out because it's held on both sides. So pretty smart design and a really good way to uh, you know, utilize some space that normally you might not be able to utilize. And I couldn't say for sure. Um, I would assume that they will fit other tracks or they sell them for other tracks. Um, I just use the, the Festival ones. So, you know, take a look at their website. Maybe if you have a Craig, if you have a Triton, if you have a Makita, if you have all the different brands, um, you know, they might make them that fit that specifically, or maybe they already fit. I don't know. I I just have the one. All right, so the next thing is kind of silly. It's an extremely inexpensive item, but holy cow, has it been really, really nice to have ever since I got one. And it's a thing that I got from my good buddy Sedge, and that is having one of these horsehair brushes laying around your assembly table. <laughs> these costs like hardly any, it's like 10 bucks, right? If that, you could probably buy them in any home store. Having one of these and being able to just quickly brush off your work surfaces and knock that stuff to the floor without, so this is what I've always done in the past. I've taken compressed air and I've just blown the stuff off and all that stuff goes up in the air and it goes all over the room and it goes underneath other tools. Um, and for me, I'm, I'm try to be a little bit religious about cleaning at the end of a day as much as I can, just because I like coming out to a, a clean environment. So this has really made that nice because at the end of the day, I can just brush this stuff off. It all goes around the assembly table and I sweep everything up. Um, I'll give you a quick, uh, example of what I'm talking about. So one of the my favorite things, because of the type of assembly table that I have, is these grooves or channels from the aluminum extrusion. So I can just take this brush and I can easily clean it out at the end of the day and pull all that stuff towards me, or I can push it the other direction. Um, and then obviously, you know, brushing off the tops and get everything in there. And it's it's just a really nice thing to have. It's something that you wouldn't think you needed uh, but once you have it, it's really nice. And I just keep it stored right under here. So anytime I need it, pull it out, brush away. All right, the next item is actually something that I truly regret not putting in my previous shop. I'll talk about that here in a minute. I just want to highlight a couple of key features um, so you're not sitting here staring at this while I talk about my experiences uh, so far. Uh, the first thing is that it swivels. Um, the total length is 50 feet. The brand is Flexzilla. Uh, obviously, it's got a, a great color, inside joke there, and it extends uh, and retracts very well. It locks into place very well, um, and it, it doesn't take up a big space, right? It's got a very small form factor compared to what I previously had, so let's talk about that. In my previous shop, I was thinking about getting this one, and... I asked some people that owned them and I read a bunch of reviews and took a look at a bunch of forums and stuff that talked about this one specifically. And it was a very mixed bag of reviews, um, which is why I decided not to get it. So what did I end up doing? Well, I ended up spending a bunch of money on a really big one that I absolutely did not need. And I actually didn't love it. I gave it away when I moved. Um, not that there was anything wrong with it. It was just way more than I ever needed. It was like 100 feet or 150 feet. It was super heavy duty. The only thing I have hooked up to it is a small air compressor, like most people's shops, right? And I decided to finally go back and buy this one. So I've had this one since March or April, whenever I moved in here. And I use it fairly often. But to be honest, I'm probably like most other shops. And the only thing I use an air compressor for is to blow off dust, which I just talked about. I don't love doing and use it for my nailers. And that's it. That's the only thing I use the air compressor for, which is why I don't have a massively huge air compressor and I don't need really more than 50 feet. Matter of fact, 50 feet will still make it from this corner all the way out and let me 
fill up my tires on my car if I needed to. So my experience so far with this has been great. It's more than I need. It was far less uh, expensive than the one that I bought, that's for sure. And so far it's working just fine. It pulls out way easier actually than my previous one did. And it retracts very nicely whether there's air in it or not in it. And of course, time will tell if it really uh, you know, lasts lots of use. But again, I think I'm way more um, comparable to most other hobbyist woodworkers in their garage that are only using it for those two things. Therefore, it doesn't get used all that much. So I think that this is going to last a very long time. But I wanted to share that one uh, because... But I wanted to share that one because a lot of people ask me questions about which hose reel that I use because I, I just think it's a standard thing that most people want in their shop. And I would say that it's probably one of the more popular ones on the market. All right, so I'm going to end this video with my favorite uh, new thing in the shop. And it's silly because it's it's such a simple thing. But holy cow, has it made my life a lot easier. Um, this is a product that is specific to people who have an MFT or some other MFT style table that has a 20 millimeter um, bench dog hole in the top of it. With that being said, I will say that I don't know off the top of my head if they make this with a three quarter inch uh, because I know a lot of tables have three quarter inch holes. I'm not sure, I have the 20, but what this is, and I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see uh, here in just a minute. This is a product made by UJK. What this is, is you chuck this up in your drill and it does two things at the same time. One, it will clean out the dog hole, which I'll tell you here in a moment why that's important. And two, it will put a tiny chamfer on the dog hole. Now, let me bring you in close so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing that I want to point out is that it has a removable and adjustable carbide cutter, much like you'd find on a helical head. And that cutter is at an angle, and that cutter is what does the chamfered edge. I'm gonna show you how this thing works here in just a second. I, I don't know why this is such a simple thing, and I absolutely love it. Um, and there's one key feature, and that key feature, over the fact that it chamfers the dog hole, and you might be asking, what do you need a chamfered uh, hole for? I'll show you that here in a minute. but more importantly, what I love is these. So there's one, two, three, four. There's four slots here. And what these do is these, the tolerance is extremely tight. These will actually cut and clean out the inside of the dog hole. And for me on my work surface, that is incredibly, incredibly important. So not only is it cleaning that out and getting a nice uh, smooth finish on the inside, getting rid of glue, but it's also doing the chamfer. Now, let me show you how this thing works. So the bit just goes into your standard chuck, right? It just has a hex shank and it goes in there. But I wanted to bring you in close to show you. So this hole right here has drips of glue from when I've done glue ups. So if I tried to take a bench dog like this one here and put it down in there, it's very difficult to get it in also very difficult to get it out because that glue damages it. Same thing with this one. Theoretically, this bench dog should be very easy to push in, kind of like that one. So how do we fix that? I don't want to sit there and I don't want to like, you know, try to pick out the glue. Well, that's where this is so awesome. So as I start to turn this, those ridges on the side are actually cleaning that out. So let's go full speed. Let's do this one too. Now, this bench dog should slide right in, right? So now I don't have that issue anymore. And believe me, on my assembly table, that kind of stuff happens constantly because it's directly under the glue up. But that's not the best part about it. Before I had mentioned, uh, you know, it gives a nice little chamfered edge. Well, why is that important? Well, one, you know, you don't have uh, those sharp edges anymore. But let's say I was going to use a bench dog like this, which is called a chamfer dog, right? What it has on it is a chamfered collar that is very small to stop it from going in to the table. What's the benefit of that? The benefit of that is that I'm still referencing the 20 millimeter hole pattern because that is the size of this, that 
tiny little collar in that chamfered edge is what's stopping it from going through the table. Now, it's also a benefit to stuff like this, which is also a chamfer dog, but now it is flush to the surface. And as you can see here in the top, these dogs um, have a threaded hole. These dogs are made by TSO products. The TSO is pretty much the only bench dogs that I use at this point for a variety of reasons, but I'm just using them here to show you the benefit. To me, this is incredibly important in my table to include this, to include the taller versions, because there's a lot of times where I am referencing the actual 20 millimeter pattern. The other thing that you could do, it would be expensive, but you could do, you could buy a whole bunch of these and place these in your uh, the top of your work surface and actually stop things from falling through um, and also be able to attach jigs and stuff to it if you wanted to. Um, so again, just to benefit this new uh, reaming tool, I believe that's what it's called by UJK. It's pretty awesome if you have an MFT style, uh, you know, bench or setup um, and you're looking for something to solve those issues. Could you use a router bit? Sure, you could uh, in a trim router. However, it would not solve the problem of the glue on the inside because of these ridges here. So this, as simple as it is, has been invaluable uh, to me and my assembly table. So those are a bunch of items that I have in my shop that I think are useful or people want to know about. If you found any of them useful, as I'm sure you could expect, links are down in the video description. That's going to do it for this video. Until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.